Find someone that loves you book too. I've been holding my breath. The child watches his father leave. He knows with the same certainty that he breathes that his father will come back. The child's father is strong and brave and noble. He is a great fighter and a skilled warrior. He has gone on countless missions and come back unharmed every time. This mission will be the same. It is not. The child can no longer trust that he'll breath. Not again. There's another one. Where's Sonic? Where's her son? This is dangerous. Please not her son. Then, when everyone is finally safe, she thinks that whole thing about the unwinding. She sees the anger and rage that he hides behind a tightly preserved mask of mimic dirt manners and stilted language. Sure, separating him from Robotic has done wonders for his emotions and she is happy every time he is happy. But she still thinks he could stand to take a step back and maybe breathy every once in a while. Sometimes she sees bits of herself in him, remembers how she was as a kid when someone teased her or pulled her hair or pushed her sister over, and she felt such a blinding stab of anger that it seized her lungs and stole the air from her chest. It's why she turned to yoga in the first place, desperate to have control over herself in a healthy way. Knuckles, she thinks, has control over himself but it is in an entirely unhealthy way. It's in the way he insists on rebuilding their house himself and not stopping for rest or anything to eat until it is done. It's the way he hunches over his food but never asks for seconds until they've been offered. It's the way he waits at the door whenever she gets home, but shuffles away when she holds her arms out for a hug. It's the way he watches Sonic, like he's wondering what else he can do to prove that he's a ton. He walks as if the weight of the entire universe is on his shoulders and Maddie etches to be able to help him lift the burden, even if just for a moment, just so he can see what it's like to walk freely, easily. It's good that he has Sonic and Tails. They are good for him, even if he maybe doesn't think so. Sonic draws him out of his serious spells and gets him to joke around more encouraging activities and pranks that make Knuckles laugh and become confident enough to come up with ideas of his own. And Tails, well Tails is young and kind and he clearly awakens some sort of protective side of Knuckles that usually ends with them drawing word tech designs together at the kitchen table, or playing catch in the yard, the three are brothers already and it's barely been a month. But that's also the thing, it's barely been a month, a month is not a very long time. And Maddie is fully aware that there is going to be an adjustment period. She and Tom gone through the same thing initially with Sonic. And it certainly had been easy, even though it was completely and utterly worth it. She's expecting the same to happen now. She's seeing it happen already with Nails, with Tom putting his foot in his mouth and then ending up spending the night holding the little fox close and coming to her in the morning with said eyes and an even sadder story. Something like that is going to happen with Knuckles. She just knows it. She's just maybe not so sure about what it's going to look like, or when it's going to start. It starts like this. Maddie is out doing the grocery shopping, and she's left the boys home alone to do normal kid things like watch cartoons and eat cereal for lunch. Sonic text to tell her to get grapes, because Knuckles just ate the last bunch and already wants more, even if he apparently isn't asking for them. Sonic texts again, to tell her to hurry home because something weird is going on. Maddie hurries home. It looks like this. Knuckles, punching over at the bottom of the stairs, sucking in wheezing breaths that are clearly not getting air into his lungs. Sonic, standing at the top of the stairs, clutching the Master Emerald and staring down in horror. Tails, hovering a few feet in the air thanks to his dual appendages, wringing his hands and holding back tears. Maddie, he still in the door and mouth open in a perfect O of shock as she stares at the scene she has found herself staring in. It sounds like this. Dry, wheezing, rasping cause that tell Maddie Knuckles is deep in a panic attack and unable to calm himself down enough to stop it. Stuttered words of confusion from Sonic who does know what is going on but he knows something's very, deeply, badly wrong. Soft sobs as Tails starts to panic himself at the sight of his beloved older brother losing his famed composure.
A command from Maddie, harsh and firm and yet filled with love as she sharply orders Sonic and Tails to go to their rooms. It ends like this, Maddie, on the floor next to Knuckles, begging him to breath. Breathy, Knuckles, you have to breathe. Just listen to my voice and listen to my breathing. Okay, okay. Knuckles, sweetie, breathe up. What was that? Knuckles asks her later on, when they've both moved to the couch, he's at one end, keeping a distance that she wishes she could reach. It's not what he wants at the moment though, and Maddie is all about giving her boys what they want, except maybe ice cream after 8 in the evening. I think it was a panic attack. She says carefully. Do you know what that is? Unlike Tails, who watched Sonic for so long that he absorbed a lot of Earth culture by association, Knuckles is a stranger to this world. He does know the same expressions as them, and he always mixes them up when he tries to. He knows their language, but it is a strained relationship that often has him blinking in silent confusion when Sonic and Tails start talking about Xboxes and Y Sports and Netflix and this and that and everything in between. An attack of fear. Knuckles asks. But there was no one around to attack me. Think of it as your mind attacking you. Maddie says. Both. She is cut off by Knuckles jumping up in alarm. My own mind is my enemy. No, no. She rushes to say. Not in the way that Robotnik is an enemy, in the way that perhaps a push door that you were pulling is an enemy. I see. Knuckles says, sinking back onto the couch. You are saying I experienced a hindrance to my mission, but it came from inside me instead of outside me. Maddie holds back a wince, because there's a problem with what he said there, mission. Knuckles still thinks what he's doing right now is less living and more, existing for a purpose. Baby steps, though. Yes, that's what it was. Something upset you when your brain went into overdrive trying to cope. Oh. Knuckles looks down. Pretzel lady. So she is pretzel lady at the moment. Maddie has quickly become used to being a wide variety of names. Madison, Maddie, Mads, Pretzel Lady, Mers Wachowski. Mom and all three of her kids seem to switch between them depending on what mood they are in. Knuckles has followed the names in a progression that speaks to how comfortable he's slowly becoming with them. And so to revert back to Pretzel Lady is something that makes Maddie's heart etch. Yes. She says, because that's all she can do right now, be here, and see it through. I know what upset me. Okay, that's good. Do you want to talk about it? Knuckles stays to eight. Maddie sneaks a glance at him, not wanting to overwhelm him with an all-out stare but wanting to try and get an idea of what he's feeling. His huge eyes give nothing away though. And Maddie remembers with a shiver that Knuckles may be young but he has been raised for war. It is easy for him to lock everything away and maintain an outward appearance of steely science. Far, far too easy for him. Is it allowed? He asks finally, startling Maddie. Is what allowed? Talking about it. Maddie holds back her initial urge to say who told you it wasn't allowed in case she ends up offending him, and instead settles for a nod. Yes, it's allowed. It's good to talk about our feelings. It helps them to not grow inside of us and become too much for us to handle. I do feel like there was something inside me, Knuckles says it. I do feel like there was something inside me, it is unfamiliar. I do not know what to call it. Knuckles said. Maybe I can help you find the right word. Knuckles thinks for a moment, this time, his expressions play more freely across his face. Maddie can see his apprehension and uncertainty, his reluctance, and then finally his acceptance. He's ready to talk. I am very grateful for you and Donut Lord providing me shelter. 
He says, it's not where Maddie was expecting him to start at all, but she sits patiently and listens. It is not something I ever expected, but I am honored you wish to care for me. I do not want you to think I am not deeply in your depth. There is no debt for being a child. Who told you that you need to warn you shelter your safety? Maddie thinks fiercely. It is just, I have to admit, I have been finding it very hard to relax you. Knuckle says, he pauses, glancing at her like he's waiting for an angry reaction. She refuses to give him one. It is like my instincts are telling me something is going to go wrong. I think I am worried about the emeralds. How can we be sure that it's safe now? Oh. Maddie thinks sadly. She knows the word for this. We call that anxiety. It means being worried about things, perhaps even if they aren't happening. She said gently. I see. Knuckles does not sound pleased to hear this. When you spend your whole life looking for something, what becomes of your life when you eventually, inevitably find it? Maddie, without knowing it, had always wanted a home. She'd wanted a home and someone to love, and a place to relax in. She wanted to know at the end of a long, hard day that she had something good to go back to. When she and Tom had stepped through the door of their house, a great pressure had lifted itself off her chest, and she's yet to truly see it return. Had to opposite happened to Knuckles when he'd been offered a place in their home. Had something dropped on him? Is it crushing him now? Well, you know. She says, waiting to see if Knuckles will cut her off or keep listening. I can't say I haven't noticed that something was wrong. You have seemed very tense these past few months. I apologize. Knuckles says. No, you don't. Maddie says easily, unable to resist reaching out and tapping him gently on the nose, just like she does for Sonic. That's not something you need to be sorry about. But... Nope. She giggles a bit, just to show him how not super serious this is. You don't have to apologize for your feelings, but I really would like it if we could talk about them. Not being able to breathe is a scary thing. I was not scared. Knuckles says lies. And I can't breathe perfectly, even if you also is less ideal than my home planet. Knuckles, you had a panic attack. That means that your breathing stops working properly. It will not happen again. I promise. Knuckles said fiercely. That's not what I meant. What did you mean? It's alright if it's hard sometimes, you know, it lets us know something's not okay, and then we can fix it. Maddie said. I am broken. Knuckles fixes her with such a look that Maddie can't help it anymore. She closes the distance between them and pulls Knuckles into a hug so tight that she's sure nobody would be strong enough to separate them. No, no, of course you're not broken. That's not what that means at all. I'm sorry you thought that's what that meant. You were perfect, Knuckles. You were amazing and you were perfect. It's not your fault that things are like this. You're just a kid, you hear me. You were just a kid. And the world is too big for kids. My planet was actually very small. Knuckles sniffs. Maddie can't see him properly at the moment, but she can feel the way he shakes. That's not what I meant. She says, and the words become a sob as she can feel a lump forming in her throat. What did you mean? Maddie doesn't know what she meant, at least. Not well enough to explain in a way that Knuckles will understand. She just wishes she could tell him how it wasn't fair, how he shouldn't have this burden on his shoulders, how she knows he loved his dad, 
But didn't his dad know he was too young to carry this weight this heavy, heavy weight? No child shouldn't be able to breath. All children should breathe freely and easily, as easy as they blink and smile and laugh. War is not a place for children. They should not grow up thinking they have a purpose beyond being happy and safe. Knuckles should not have been told his life was not his to have, but rather something to give for the sake of a stupid rock. She has heard Knuckles laugh more than once or twice since he came to live with them, and he certainly doesn't smile much either. He does not see himself as the child he is. He is a warrior in his own eyes, one who is fighting a war he never should have been recruited for. This is what you ask by. She has progressed up a level of familiarity since the conversation has started. Is it because she's crying into him, clutching him tight the same way she clutches Sonic when he's just come back from doing something dangerous that scares her? This is what you ask by. Are you okay? She finds the strength inside her to pull back and face Knuckles once more. He's watching her carefully but almost, hopefully, he's waiting for her to say something. I'm okay. She says, and wipes a few of her tears away. I'm just worried about you. I am alright. Knuckles says, lies again because by now even he has to know that this isn't the case. I always am. You don't have to be. She says, this time she can see the confusion flicker across his face. You want me to not be okay? I want you to know that it's alright if you are sad or upset. I want you to accept your feelings and allow yourself to feel them. I want you to relax. How can I do that? Knuckles asks. When we are keeping the Master Emerald, the purpose of my very existence, in a dirty sock draw. It's the last place people will ever look for it. Maddie tries for a joke but Knuckles just looks pained. This conversation is going nowhere except in circles. They're hitting the same bands, saying the same things, refusing to accept the same answers. Is this all they can offer each other? The Cho's Emerald and the relationship Knuckles has with it is something Maddie can say she does not understand. Past the point that she finds it unhealthy, it's certainly not something she feels comfortable enough with unpacking right now. When Knuckles is so confused and she's so upset, but what can she do? She's his mother, for crying out loud. She has to help him. She wants to help him. And then Maddie remembers truly why the first name she was ever given by one of her kids was Pretzel Lady. Would you like to tree something with me? Why don't we go outside? She offers, Knuckles shrugs, something he has picked up from Sonic, but gets off the couch and follows her through the house and out the back door to the deck where she does her yoga every morning. Once there, he watches as she sits down and twists herself into a familiar position. With the sun filtering through the trees, she tilts her face to the ski and breathes. She can feel Knuckles staring at her, but now that she's found this moment of peace she's content enough to wait for him to come to her. Eventually his curiosity, less intense than Tails but a strong presence nonetheless, will win out and she's certain that he will join her. Sure enough, she can feel the creak of the deck beneath her as Knuckles settles himself down beside her. She keeps staring up as is needed in this position but she can see him out of the corner of her eye attempt to move his smaller limbs into the same shape. Maddie crosses her fingers internally as she sees him follow her gaze up to the trees and the ski and the sun. Please, let this work. She thinks with everything she has to give. What do we do now? He asks, voice much greater than Maddie has ever heard it before. You'll feel it. Just wait for a moment. Your body will know what to do. She can almost hear his confusion, but this is one conclusion Maddie wants him to reach on his own. She's sure if they just sit here for long enough, he'll realize what it is he's meant to do.
Manny thinks of all the time that has passed since Knuckles has come to live with them. She thinks of harsh looks that are slowly softening, of stilted language that is gradually smoothing. She remembers a day out on the baseball diamond where Knuckles lifted tails easily into the air while Sonic watched on with a grin. She recalls stopping by a hard rubbish pile on the side of the road because Knuckles' surveying look had lingered a little longer on a brown wicker chair. She thinks of an extension with two new rooms for her two new kids who she already loves more than the world. It's all of this that has Maddie feeling so confident at this time. This is something she can give to Knuckles. It's not a perfect fix but it is a start, and Maddie is all about new beginnings and giving something a go. She waits, glancing at Knuckles, and sure enough, he breathes. The child watches his father come home, his mother, too. He knows enough about them by now to expect this. They both come home at the same time and they always hold their arms out for hugs from their children. They are kind parents, loving and loyal. They do not make promises that cannot be kept, but they do promise to always try. The child thinks perhaps he can start to trust again. 